Welcome everyone who's participating with us electronically. We're in communion as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ risen from the dead and our merciful Father who calls us to eternal life be with you all. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you can see we have this divine mercy image. The Sunday following Easter is the end of the eight days called the octave. Those of you who know music a little bit know that there's such a, such a thing as an octave and the last day it repeats the first day. And But Easter season keeps going for 50 days right up until Pentecost. But these special eight days which we conclude today to really assimilate what Easter means, what the Paschal Mystery means, and which we've begun to be connected with through, as we'll hear in this opening prayer, it's through baptism, confirmation, and the blood, meaning the Eucharist. And that's why we're connected with the Paschal Mystery. And if we do that, as we'll hear in the Gospel, we can have peace. So we offer the Mass for all of you who are participating for your own personal needs and intentions, your families, your economic situation. Above all, we pray for an end to, to this pandemic and financial crisis that follows from it and all the suffering of people, uh, particularly those who are in, in great danger, not just from the coronavirus, the COVID, but also the people with other terminal illnesses. So we begin humbly calling to mind our sins and as we, we will hear in the gospel that Jesus establishes the sacrament of confession but we always begin mass as well with the act of uh, recalling an you know, examine of consciousness and a type of an act of a contrition trusting in God's mercy Lord Jesus, you raised us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. I will give glory to God as we sing glory to the Holy Trinity.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what baptismal font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated to listen attentively to the Word of God. In this first reading, we see in the Acts of the Apostles how the primitive community of Catholic Christians, how they uh, lived. And you'll see here the four main characteristics that still to this day is fellowship. Then secondly, it's also uh, fraternal communion. And of course, the breaking of the bread, as we will have here with the Holy Communion. But also, it starts by saying catechesis or teaching of the apostles to include preaching, which we always do at Mass, and then uh, finally praying together. If we do those things in the risen Lord, and like them we can have joy and, and share that faith with others. Let's listen carefully. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles, and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread, and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's needs. Every day, they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. A responsorial. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard-pressed and was fallen, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior the joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord this has been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. And now in the second reading from our first Pope, St. Peter, and he speaks of how through baptism we're born again and have a new birth, regenerated, and that's through the resurrection of Christ that we're connected with by the baptism. So then we can look forward, if we live our faith, and faith is, is like gold that needs to be purified, we can then attain the inheritance in heaven. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to the, an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now, for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not now see him, now yet believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving but believe Thomas answered and said to him my Lord and my God Jesus said to him have you come to believe because you have seen me blessed are those who have not seen and have believed now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, on this Divine Mercy Sunday, it's particularly appropriate given the situation in the world and the church with this coronavirus pandemic and all the suffering. So hopefully if we enter into this 
mystery, it should help us quite a bit, especially to have peace, even though this situation continues. Here, three times, Jesus promises peace. Of course, it takes faith to believe that he rose again if we want that peace. So, the church always, now for a number of years, on the Sunday following Easter Sunday, celebrates Divine Mercy Sunday. And for those who might not know, I'll just tell a little bit of the story, is that in the year 1931, Faustina, who's now declared a saint, she's canonized, that's why we can trust in the message, because people could maybe say, oh, I saw Jesus, or the Virgin Mary appeared to me. The church is really slow and careful, and in her case as well, the, the other sisters and the priests were very skeptical, because there's nothing wrong with being having a healthy skepticism. It is wrong to rule things out completely, whether it was Juan Diego, who had the vision of Our Lady Guadalupe, or Bernadette with Lourdes, or the children of Fatima. There's always seems to be a uh, rejection and very careful scrutiny, and, and that's that's okay, but not a total rejection. You have to be open to that God does these things. And part of the message eventually was that she should ask for the Pope to declare the Sunday following Easter Sunday to be devoted to the great mercy of God because she saw that or, or understood from the message that there would be very, very difficult times coming. And sure enough, right after she died, World War II began. And then after that, a whole other series of things. Auschwitz, killing of six million Jews and about a million Christians. The, uh, the great suffering from uh, other wars, Korean War, Vietnam War, Iraq War, uh, the great sufferings as well uh, through communism. So she, she was on behalf of God saying, Despite all the suffering, have faith in my mercy. And that's a big part of this gospel, is to have faith and not let doubts uh, dominate that or, or taint that faith. It's a gift. Faith is a gift, but it also is a human act. It's both. We have to take care of what we've received. So she, in the visions, was told to have a painter paint to describe uh, to that painter, and this is the image we have. Of course, we know symbolic. It's, it's similar to Sacred Heart, even from way back. Sacred Heart, we could say, well, in Spanish it's Jesus en vos confío. Sacred Heart, Jesus, I trust in you. But from the Sacred Heart, or, or you could say from where the soldier's lance went in, came out water, which John chapter 7 says, is symbolic of the Holy Spirit, and so it, it symbolizes baptism. So, baptism and confirmation, and the red ray symbolizes the blood of Christ, which is the Holy Eucharist. Those are the three sacraments to be initiated as a Catholic Christian into the body of Christ. And part of the message, to make it easy, was that the, the A, B, C, if, if we want that divine mercy, you have to A, ask for it. And the special way to ask for it, one is the easiest, is just to repeat, Jesus, I trust in you. Which a lot of times as priests, we advise people who are really depressed or uh, losing their faith, for example. But a, a very effective way is the novena that as well as, well in Spanish they say coronilla, the chaplet, the Divine Mercy chaplet. So when you do the novena, which I suppose is on internet, 
it's usually we there are a lot of these little red pamphlets that have the novena. You you say the prayer that corresponds for the each day, and you do the chaplet. I've grown very much of my devotion in the Divine Mercy. Uh, it started kind of strong when I was in Tijuana, Mexico, and we had many very terrible situations such as, let's say, kidnappings. Whenever we had a kidnapping, I would always hand out that Divine Mercy Novena, and for all the times that it happened, I remember every single one of them, the, the people kidnapped were were released. Sometimes they were missing a thumb or an ear or a nose or something, but they were always at least alive when they were released. But I've been saying the novena on a rotating basis now for a well, while since the beginning of the year. When I have my holy hour and I say the rosary, I always follow that with the Divine Mercy chaplet. Very powerful. Now, St. Faustina herself died fairly young, age 33. But many saints died at that special age. That's the age that our Lord died. And, well, for example, St. Catherine of Siena died at age 33. She died of tuberculosis. St. Therese, the little flower, she also died of tuberculosis. And like St. Therese, Faustina offered all that sickness and sacrifice. She didn't let that go to waste. She joined it to Jesus on the cross. So, as we enter into this uh, Divine Mercy Sunday, we remember the second condition. The first one is to ask for the mercy. The second one is be merciful. Nobody can have the mercy of God if they're not also merciful. That would be total hypocrisy. Jesus, be merciful with me. I'm not going to be merciful with these other people, but yes, be merciful. No, it doesn't work that way. If we want Him to be merciful, He makes that a condition. We have to be merciful to others. And the special way to be merciful are the seven corporal acts of mercy that are in Matthew chapter 25. Feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, visit those in prison, uh, console the sick, uh, give clothes to the naked, and shelter to those who are homeless. The last one is not in there, but that's a simple one of uh, burying the dead. But the, the, uh, there's the other seven, the spiritual works of mercy that are really important. One of them is to instruct those who are ignorant of the truth. Uh, that, that means with humility, but it's a favor to tell people, no, abortion is wrong for this, this, and this reason. Uh, then we also, with the act of mercy, forgive others. Another one is to be patient with the defects of others. Uh, another one is to, uh, it, to help those who are doubtful, who have doubts like Thomas did. Of course, all the apostles had doubts, but in a special way, Thomas showed it here. To do fraternal correction of sinners. Sometimes people, when they confess with the priest, they say, Father, I need to confess. I, I corrected my son, he's alcoholic, and so I corrected him. And we have to say, that's not a sin. It would have been a sin if you have omission of not correcting somebody. How you do it is important to do it humbly and right and not judging the person on their inside. Of course, we have to correct others. It's an act of mercy. But the other is to pray for the living and the dead. So if we do those things in other ways, Spontaneous, you show mercy, we can trust God with mercy for with us. So ask for mercy, be merciful, and see, have, have confidence. So that was the problem here of, of Thomas. He let those doubts get to him. And so the church teaches, if you look at the Catechism, there's, there's two types of doubt. One are doubts that are our fault because we got lazy we don't go to church that's really what the problem was of Thomas he did he wasn't with the community when Jesus appeared and so that's why his doubts began fortunately he at least came that following Sunday as we just heard in the gospel but that's very dangerous to separate ourselves from the community the church 
Or it could be somebody's lazy sloth. They don't read the Bible, don't pray. Obviously, the faith is going to go down in proportion to our laziness of not practicing the faith. It also could decline if somebody's imprudent. They start, let's say it's a young person, they start watching stuff of the Mormons or Jehovah Witness. Jehovah Witness don't believe Jesus died on the cross and he didn't rise. Muslims, the same thing. Some people, well, the Islamic faith is interesting. They, they claim that Jesus uh, didn't die on the cross, that in the Quran it says it was substituted for another person, so Jesus, the real Jesus was hiding. And so then when he came out, people thought he rose, but it was just that he had hid during the time that this other guy who looked like him was crucified. So, but if people are imprudent and they don't, they're not strong in their faith and they start dabbling in other religions, very bad idea. Uh, so, but other doubts are not sinful because sometimes people, particularly when we have ret confirmation retreats, kids sometimes confess, Father, I have doubts, so I want to confess that sin. We have to say, wait, well, it depends. If, if a young person says, I don't understand how that bread and wine really becomes the body and blood of Christ. And so I, I want to confess that doubt. We, could, we have to say to them, well, you need to be humble. And your starting point, like a child, is I don't know how that gets changed into the body and blood of Christ because I know it still looks like bread and wine after. But I accept on the authority of God and the Bible and the church, I accept it. I don't understand how it happens, but there's the famous saying, I believe and then I can understand. It's not the other way. I will understand first in my great brain and then I will believe. No, first comes being humble and I trust and I believe and then you'll see how it makes sense. And that goes for really all the mysteries of the church. We, there's nothing wrong with asking questions and using our reason and our brain, it would be, it is wrong to let those doubts grow and to then not seek to uh, raise the question so that uh, the Lord can show us the light of what, why those uh, make sense. But the Lord, for example, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, after she died, they found her diary and she admits in that she says, uh, I, were, I was assailed with doubt. She didn't give in to the doubts. So one of the great saints, I remember, Alfonso of Liguri, said he was attacked with doubts against every single article in the creed, every single one of them. But he didn't give in to them. He kept saying, I believe, and he, he rejected those doubts. Or somebody could have doubts about their vocation, their, that God called them to a marriage with such and such a spouse and they're married in the church. So those doubts can come from the evil one as well and he, God permits that sometimes because if we get through the doubts, oftentimes our faith is actually stronger. So brothers and sisters, as we continue to enter into the Paschal Mystery where we want these gifts that God and, and our Lord Jesus Christ promises us in, in this gospel, the first gift is peace. Three times he says, peace I give you. Uh, but it does take faith that he has risen. And then he gives the gift of the Holy Spirit to, to the apostles. They were in the upper room, same place where the Last Supper, but the same place that later there was the Pentecost for others. But this was kind of an anticipation of Pentecost. And, and not publicly, it was just the uh, apostles, apparently with a couple of disciples too, but so it's the gift of peace, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and then the gift of forgiveness of sins. That's why we. This is one Bible site that we use to justify why we say in the Catholic Christian Church, Christ established as one of the seven sacraments, the beautiful sacrament of forgiveness in uh, confession, and. So, you know, always we say, because I've spoken with many non-believers or, or Protestants, we say, only God forgives. We believe that. But 
the priest in confession is an instrument of God, like a pen. We're just like a pen. We declare the forgiveness. I didn't die on the cross, so I, in that sense I can't forgive. But as an instrument of God, there's true forgiveness. Because he says here, what sins you he gave the power to the apostles, a successor of the apostles on the bishops, and the bishops ordain a man a priest. But also says, sins that you retain are retained. Because we have to make a judgment. If a person confesses and they're not repentant, then we, we have to say, well, until you're sorry. It's, it's somebody selling drugs, I've, you know, and they say, yeah, my conscience is bothering me. Uh, I've been selling drugs, out cocaine and so forth, but I want to confess, okay, so you're going to stop doing that? No, I'm not going to stop doing it. I need that for my income, but I feel bad about it. Sorry, it can't be forgiven. You're not truly repentant. you got to at least desire to give that up and not intend to con you do and that's why it says the, the the priest does have the power to say there's no forgiveness but overall God wants to forgive us always and then he wants us to prolong the mission because here he said to the apostles in this gospel as the father sent me now I'm sending you the same for any baptized person that we're all sent on mission to be instruments of peace and reconciliation and share the faith the good news that our Lord Jesus Christ is risen and that he's present, especially present, body, blood, soul, and divinity, truly risen, really and truly, in the Holy Eucharist. That's why, especially in Spanish, it's a tradition when we lift up the host for consecration, the people spontaneously say these same words of Thomas, my Lord and my God, and after the consecration, my Lord and my God, Dios mío, Señor mío y Dios mío. By the way, just to finish, I've dialogued or tried to dialogue with Jehovah's Witnesses that they don't believe Jesus is God. And one time I remember when I was, they were citing the Bible, and I was saying, well, the Bible comes from the Catholic Church, etc. And then uh, one clear sight among many, there are many in, the, especially the Gospel of John, this one where Thomas says to Jesus, Lord, my Lord and my God, to Jesus. But when I, they had their Bible there, uh, sure enough, that part is not there. The, the founder of the Jehovah Witness, who was a nice American guy, um, Charles Russell, very nice, very wrong, but very nice, apparently. But he, he took, they, they took that out, as well as other inconvenient phrases. But this is a clear one, where the divinity of Christ. He's truly human, but also truly God. So let's uh, now stand as we renew our faith. Since this is the end of the octave, it's an occasion to renew our baptism. So I ask you to respond after me. Do you renounce Satan? I do. I do. do you renounce the devil and his temptations and seductions? I, I do. do. Do you renounce sin so that you can live in the freedom of the sons and daughters of God? I, I do. do. Now we do the positive part. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? I, I do. do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? On the third day He rose again from the dead, and He sits now at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and He will come again to judge the living and the dead? I do. I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. I do. Well, brothers and sisters, now with that faith in the risen Lord, we present to God these intentions and others that we have in our hearts. And our response could be, risen Lord, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the church that has the body of the risen Christ here on earth, God's Holy Spirit may guide us in proclaiming the truth and hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace and justice in the world, may Easter grace be with all nations and peoples in turning away from division. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who struggle each day to make ends meet, may God grant them a spirit of fortitude. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all here who have been reborn in the waters of baptism 
or join us at the table of the Lord this Easter season. May the risen Christ be their rock and their, their guide. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayers. For any other intentions, particularly those of you who are listening for your own family needs, and for all of our deceased loved ones, and for a swift end to this pandemic, and that God bring good out of this evil, especially conversions. And we ask this by the intercession of the Virgin Mary, Our Lady of Mercy, Mother of Mercy, and I'll now pass with the holy water symbolically also for you who are watching, showing that we renew our baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated for the offertory gifts. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending an happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim you, O Lord. But above all, in this time of Easter, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For Christ Jesus is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, with paschal joy, every people exult in your praise, and we join with the angelic host as we sing the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We use the prayer for reconciliation. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. You, Christ Jesus himself, is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us, when we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for your sake you handed over to death on the cross. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we ask you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love in the Eucharist, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly ask that you accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously endow us with His Holy Spirit who takes away everything that divides us from one another. May He make your church a sign of unity and instrument of peace among all people and keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Jose our Bishop, and your entire people. And just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph and the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and all those brothers and sisters who have died in your friendship, to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven, a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant your peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and protected from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord, risen Lord, be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am God, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Brothers and sisters who are watching, we invite you to join with us in spiritual communion. There's no special prayer. It can be your own words, but this is a formula. You could repeat, My Jesus, present in the Most Holy Sacrament, I believe that you are here, body, blood, soul, and divinity. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. But since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. God, that our reception of this Easter sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts and bring us to eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. That little hymn there it shows the connection between believing in the risen Lord and believing in Jesus, truly present body, blood, soul, and divinity. If somebody starts to have doubts about that Jesus rose, normally they have big doubts about Jesus present in the Eucharist. And, and vice versa. So we always need to resist those temptations to, to doubt. And so we have a, the special prayer to finish the octave. And so we invite you to respond, Amen, meaning so be it, uh, after each invocation. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. The Almighty God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son, was pleased to give you the gift of redemption and children of adoption, give you gladness by His blessing. Amen. Amen. May Christ Jesus, by His redeeming work, having given you the gift of everlasting freedom, make you an heir to eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit who you received in baptism through faith, give you the grace to live in a right manner on this earth and be united with Almighty God in the homeland of heaven. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.